So, mm -hmm. we're talking today with New Jersey-based singer-songwriter John Sheen, who's been playing with the Empirical Labs of Mikey for the last few weeks, and we just wanted to ask him some questions about how it affected his performance and uh, how he felt about using it. What do you think, John? I can get a hot sound from it, a punchy vocal sound, and uh, a guitar sound that's very has a lot of separation and mm -hmm. brings out um, the different frequencies and, and makes it actually sound uh, just like finger pick. It brings out uh, the finger picking in a really unique way, I think. Finger picking has that dimensional sound anyway, because you're running a bass line and then you're picking up treble parts that are counterpoint to it. What the Mike E does is do that separation and it actually sounds more like there's a, a second guy playing with me, you know, and that's a great advantage to anyone that's playing solo. You always want to, you know, oh, you're a one-man band. But no, no, I'm one guy, that's all. It's not brittle sounding, but it is very clear. So Dave has achieved something that a lot of people have been aiming for for quite a long time, is to find something that's very transparent without sounding sterile. Really, ultimately, for um, somebody who needs an all-purpose mic preamp, this thing just does everything. It's hard to get a warm sound straight through a mixer. It's, it's a little bit of a rough sound. It's kind of, this warms up things without losing volume, and also, being very close to speakers like I am, I can soften up the sound and I can be right on top of my speakers and, and uh, I don't get feedback if I try getting some gain any other way. I mean, there's a lot of range on, on this. And those digital buttons are great too. I think they're going to be much steadier, I mean, much more long lasting. They're not going to get crackly and stuff like pots. You don't have to blow these things out. The sellability of, of the digital controls on it make it just an easy setup for it. And if you have uh, recurrent client or if it's your item and you know it's your gear and you're going to a show like John is, um, you can have settings for certain songs and achieve them very quickly with the digital controls. Yeah, you, you, you use these sheets and you just make up your little sheets just so that you're happy with certain, I mean, if you work out your sounds and then you, you remember at the end of the night, then you can put like what club you were you're using at. The, the course gain adjustment is in 5 dB steps, and there's two, two buttons that allow you to choose the gain, up or down. So we'll get a nice gain. How's that look, Ben? That looks very good. Very good. The next section is, uh, is the phase and the roll-off. Um, we're keeping it in phase, but we have a little roll-off right now. So I'll, using the 80 hertz roll-off, and 48 volts is not on, but of course the, the mic pre does come with it. So after the mic preamp and after the Phantom power, the next section you have is the comp sat section. There's a, a dial here, a, a pot here that allows you to turn up the saturation. And you can see as I turn it up, the warm light begins to flicker. And if I kept going, the toasty light would begin to flicker. That's giving you your kind of analog tape transformery saturation. Um, for a guitar like this, I'll probably stay just touching the warmth a little bit. And then the next section after that is what's called the comp mode. And there's a few settings in here. One is for the link compressors. If there's two mic E's and you want to link the compressors, you can do that. But what I'm interested in right now is high frequency emphasis. And although this guitar is fairly warm, um, the high frequency emphasis does tame a buildup of high frequencies very well and, and very eloquently. It doesn't get in the way so much and it doesn't make things sound uh, 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 dull, it just tames excessive buildup of high frequencies. So for something like cymbals, overhead cymbals, uh, or, or direct uh, spot mics on cymbals, like a hi-hat mic, fantastic thing, because you can just literally take off some of the oversaturated high end that you can get. So the same concept applies for, uh, for finger picking, but I think we'll be able to hear the dynamics a little more and bring out some of the, the uh, actual notes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Move the attack time. Sorry, I'm gonna move the ratio uh, up to a four to one. I'm gonna move the attack time just a little bit slower for now, and I'm gonna keep the release pretty fast. And you can see that I'm using a lot of compression right now. I'm gonna back down a little bit on the warmth, so it just touches the warmth light. Because I don't want to overly squeeze the finger picking. Finger picking has a lot of dynamics and it's very delicate. 
and typically you don't want to touch too hard, but a lot of times some of the lower notes can get lost. So I'm going to bring those up and keep it with a little warmth to keep it from getting squeaky, too, too trebly. And now that we've kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to raise the ratio because I really want to hit this hard for you guys. And now you can hear I've added a lot of attack to the signal compared to where it was when we started. And now I can, with the ability to mix in the dry signal again, we can make this keep the attack and have it still sound very, very natural. And as you can see, I'm, I'm taking off 8 to 10 dB of compression off the top of this guitar on a finger-picked guitar, and yet it still sounds very natural. One of the huge benefits of the Mike E.